morning, morning. The following two facts about two Republicans from Texas make absolutely no sense at all when taken in conjunction with one another. They cannot be reconciled, so please do not try. Fact number one about Senator John Cornyn and Congressman Pete Sessions is that they both have robust and illustrious anti-gay voting records. They both voted in favor of amending the Constitution to ban same-sex marriage. Congressman Sessions also voted yes on banning gay adoptions in Washington, D.C. because it's his business, and no on banning job discrimination based on sexual orientation. In their respective chambers, both men voted against the bills that would have paved the way for the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Here's Mr. Cornyn voting no in the Senate. Mr. Cornyn. <laughs> Trust me, he said no. <laughs> uh, here's Mr. Sessions in the House. Mr. Chairman, I also note as I stand that I am opposed to the provisions known as don't ask, don't tell changes. Senator Cornyn and Congressman Sessions each have a 0% rating on gay rights from the Human Rights Campaign. And as is clear from their records, these guys have earned that zero. So that's fact number one about Congressman Pete Sessions and Senator John Cornyn. That's fact number one. Fact number two, incongruous and explicable fact number two, those two members of Congress are getting an award from the Log Cabin Republicans tonight from the Republican Gay Rights Organization. They are giving a gay rights award to two politicians who do not support gay rights. Why are the Log Cabin Republicans doing this? No idea. In what way does this advance the cause of gay rights? Hard to say. Actually, easy to say it does not at all. Um, that said, on the other hand, this same organization, the Log Cabin Republicans, filed the lawsuit that resulted in a strong ruling against the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy in California two weeks ago. And that ruling might offer the Obama administration the clearest path forward for getting rid of the military's gay ban. And that definitely would advance gay rights. The Obama Justice Department expected to decide by tomorrow whether or not they will appeal that judge's ruling or whether they won't which could have the effect of simply killing the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy by means of a legal injunction. Joining us now is Carrie Ellevelt. She's Washington correspondent for The Advocate magazine, who has been all over this story. Carrie, nice to see you. Thanks for coming in. Oh, great to be here. Um, what, is it, what is it exactly that the, the Obama Justice Department has to do tomorrow in terms of this case? What are their options? Well, I, I want to, uh, first of all, preface this by saying I'm not a lawyer and I simply cover these cases. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there's just a little bit of a, a uh, difference in what you said. I, they don't actually have to appeal by tomorrow. But they what have they to state whether they, they are. They right? well, what they have to do is they have to uh, submit uh, their proposal for an order of what to do in this case. Now, the log cabin Republican lawyers submitted their order last week, and their order said uh, what we would like to see is for you, Judge Phillips, to issue an injunction nationwide on this uh, on enforcement of this ban of this policy, uh, so that it cannot be enforced by the federal government at any time at any place. And what uh, the government will do tomorrow is submit their proposed order in response to that. Okay. And what they'll likely do, I mean, a betting person might think, is, is decide that or ask her to limit the injunction number one so that it would only be limited to the plaintiffs in the case and okay. not everyone and might only be limited to the certain locales where they're from and not everywhere. Uh, and then on top of that, they'll probably ask her to stay the injunction uh, so that they can buy some time. They actually have, uh, my understanding is, 60 days from the time that she signs that order to decide whether or not to appeal. So you're going to have parallel tracks. There's going to be this last ditch effort on the political side to maybe get through uh, the legislative repeal, which is really on its last leg. I mean, it's total life support at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and, then, and then on the uh, judicial side, of course, you'll have this, uh, this thing sort of moving through in the Justice Department deciding based on what her actual order is, they'll take their 60 days and probably push it back to the very end that they can and decide whether or not to actually appeal. So people who are concerned about the Justice Department showing the Obama administration's commitment to repealing the policy shouldn't necessarily expect that uh, trying to stop that injunction tomorrow means that they're definitely going to appeal the case and fight it all the way forward. They need to stop the injunction to buy themselves some time. They, they are. Yeah. They want to buy themselves some time. I don't think they want to make any of this, these decisions before the midterms. Ha having said that, <laughs> this administration Sorry. has shown uh, no interest in in uh, 
you know, in, in letting any of these decisions stand, right? They have uh, pretty much shown an interest in defending almost every anti-gay law that's on the books. And I don't see any reason based on what I'm seeing with my reporting to think that this would be any different. But I would ask, add one thing. After the legislative, uh, uh, after legislatively it failed yesterday, uh, what you did see this morning was a New York Times editorial, and you also saw members of Congress coming together to circulate a letter to uh, push the administration not, not to, to appeal. appeal, and that is a new effort. Carrie Elleveld, Washington correspondent for The Advocate magazine, thanks for joining us this evening. I imagine we will be talking to you again. Thank Appreciate you for having it. me.